Jiugaoka is a smaller area found in the south of Tokyo, on the border of Tokyo and Kanagawa prefectures. It maintains both Japanese and European vibes while also being frequented mainly by locals. Its main features are the stores, coffee, food, sweets, and even a hidden Italian village? But more on that later. To get to Jiugaoka, you can either take the Tokyo Toyoko or Oimachi lines to Jiugaoka station. It's a commuter express stop on these lines, so you won't be waiting on the train for long. In this video, I'll be giving you the ideal itinerary for this quaint area of Tokyo, but as always, I do recommend you also wander around and get lost. Who knows what you'll find? First, take the south exit and make your way down to Sweets Forest, the most adorable selection of cafes that isn't overcrowded. Both the terrace and the inside make you feel like you've wandered into Alice's Wonderland. It has crepes, ice cream, pastries, and more, and not at the Harajuku prices either. Katakana, named after the Japanese alphabet used for foreign words, can be found close to Sweets Forest. It houses both Japanese and international crafts, knit products, pins, books, and more. The staff were lovely, but I ended up not buying anything this time around. The Kuhombutsu River Greenway is a lovely stroll on a nice day in the remains of what used to be an Edo-era river. When Tokyo modernized, the small river was filled in and a pathway with cherry blossom trees, benches, and art was put in its place. In the spring, this road is filled with locals seeking to take the perfect picture of the sakura trees. Nearby is a small shopping area called Trainchi, named because of its close proximity to the train tracks. The stores here were absolutely adorable and this area seemed pretty empty considering I went there on a Sunday. The stores mainly had local and home goods among some other seasonal festivities. Just right next door is Baked Cheese Tart, a lovely bakery that specializes in, as you would guess, cheese tarts. I got the blueberry cheese tart and I think this face will tell you all you need to know about the tart's quality. The sitting area upstairs is also adorable, and I would recommend taking a rest here since most customers choose to take their cheese tarts to go. Let's head over to the other side of the station now, Alpha Beta Coffee Club. Frequented mainly by freelancers and creatives, Alpha Beta Coffee is home to a delicious selection of coffee, beer, tea, and food. The avocado toast was actually really good? I regularly come here to do work since it's one of the few cafes near me that has Wi-Fi. In case you didn't know, I have a film photography Instagram. Jiugaoka has a camera store called Popeye that specializes in film cameras and related goods. The film they sell is actually cheaper than other film I found in Tokyo, so now I tend to only shop here for my camera and other related goods. If the coffee experience you're after is more of a chill, basement and lunch kind of vibe, Blue Books is the place to go. It has a selection of books, and coffee, of course. Let's put it out there. I love home goods. My apartment is tiny, so sadly I can't decorate too much without the place getting cluttered, but simply walking around a store as pretty as today's special just scratches that itch I have for beautiful homeware. The first floor has mainly kitchenware and a surprising amount of eco products. And the second floor has clothing, skincare, and plants. I bought a cactus on this day for only 900 yen. Hot cream was a bit hard to find, but well worth searching around for. If you want ice cream or soup or something filling, but you want it to be warm, hot cream is for you. The only thing that I can compare this to is like a mixture of clam chowder and mashed potatoes. I have never had something like this before and I recommend it so much. Now we're gonna head up the road for a bit for our last three stops, Kumano Shrine. This peaceful shrine is smaller than many you will see in videos about Tokyo, but it is still just as special. Every September, they hold an international friendship festival that encourages foreigners to attend and engage with the Japanese population. Since less people usually frequent this shrine, you are certain to have a larger sense of peace while exploring. Kosoang is a tea house located right next to the shrine's entrance. I had to wait for a bit to get in, but once I did, I was happy I waited. This tea house gives you a Kyoto feel, yet we are in modern day Tokyo. I got the simple matcha set, which comes with a wagashi Japanese candy to eat before you drink the matcha tea. And here's past Andy. Y'all, just let me interject again. This place is adorable. It definitely reminds me of Kyoto when I went there. 
and right now all of the leaves are falling and it looks like fall. It's so cute. Please come here. Please, 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 please. Last up, La Vida. If you find yourself in Tokyo saying, hey, I really want to be in Italy right now, then never fear. The teensy tiny La Vida is here to help. From pictures, this place looks big, but it is very much not. This little Italian square is mostly meant to be a photo spot, so don't take it more seriously than that. All in all, Chiyogooka is an area of Tokyo that I still don't see frequented by many tourists. It's not the typical hustle and bustle of Tokyo that you see in Shinjuku or Shibuya, but I still highly recommend going if you find yourself in need of a nice, relaxing shopping day.